Lyme disease, it's time for a new approach. And I am Dr. Mark Rutherford. I am a certified functional medicine practitioner. I am a chiropractor. I've been in practice since uh, 1980 here in Reno, 1979. Dr. Randall uh, Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, as well as being a chiropractor. Um, we're going to talk about Lyme disease today. We're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about kind of what you've been through as if you are a Lyme uh, patient. We're going to kind of recount that. We're going to kind of recount a little bit of the research, some new things, a major new thing that has come out on Lyme disease, and uh, and, uh, and 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 a new approach that we have found to be consistently successful in improving that Lyme patient's clinical picture. How is it that we know that? <laughs> okay, we put our, Doc Gates and I, Doc Gates does all the treatment here now, but we have put, but prior to that, and, and, and in, in essence, two disciplines have been put together to a, attempt to address chronic pain. And I think for a large part, we have been able to do so uh, by using two different disciplines with the nervous system and, and, Functional medicine, really the immune system, and 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 uh, and so we've seen an evolution of being able to manage um, fibromyalgia, peripheral neuropathy, dizziness, vertigo, and balance. And I don't know if you recall, but this Lyme came about. Our understanding of Lyme came about. Most of the patients, we were seeing fibromyalgia patients. Most of the patients that came in here that had Lyme had fibromyalgia, but they didn't come in here for Lyme. Okay. And, and, and those of you who have watched us, you know, we've kind of pulled this string for a long time. We started with fibromyalgia and then we went to peripheral neuropathy, dizziness, vertigo, imbalance, restless legs. One, each one seemed to have a relation to the previous one. And then there was a point where we realized that a number of our fibromyalgia patients had been treated for Lyme. And, but they were, they got, they came here in full bloom, if you will, of, of symptoms and, 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 and we got to talking one day, we, we have breakfast every Saturday morning and we got talking one day and, and I looked at Dr. Gates and I said, all these people with fibromyalgia and Lyme are getting better <laughs> and we're not treating them for Lyme. Okay. And, uh, I looked at him and I said, and this is a while ago. And I said, these people just have bad immune systems. He went, and I went, holy cow. Because those of you who are going to watch, who are watching this or who have it, we know what you went through. You know what you've gone through. We're going to recount that a little bit. And, uh, and sure enough, it, it, it's really in, in a similar category to so many of the other things that we treat. Mm -hmm. And I could mm -hmm. even say like rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm. MS, mm -hmm. lupus, those types of things. We can now say fibromyalgia. That. It's it's in this in our viewpoint, and I'm gonna have him Craig, I got I get notice of this topic about 13 minutes before we, we did this. So I want to make sure I'm not out of line. It's really in the same category as as the those chronic diseases in our understanding of it and how it should be approached. We can now see. So this should be pretty cool. So this should be pretty cool because um, we only are talking about this because we've seen consistently uh, successful results in using the paradigm that we've been using for those other uh, types of, of conditions. And we would- And the properly selected patients. No. And the properly selected patients. And we would like to share that with whoever's interested in having it shared with them today. So I did a quick overview mm -hmm. of today's mm -hmm. broadcast. Did you want to add anything to that? No, I think you pretty well hit it. Basically today we're going to emphasize, we're going to go through what most of you have been through in terms of uh, going to your doctors, maybe being associated with some stigma with your persistent symptoms of fatigue, joint pains, brain fog, not knowing what's wrong. Maybe you found a Lyme doctor who then validated your symptoms through diagnostic testing and you felt good about that. And then maybe you've been going through chronic antibiotic regimens or herbs and you're still not feeling better. We're going to talk about why you're not feeling better and our experience not only with that, but now the newest of the new research in the last, literally the last five days that has come out that is now validating Lyme disease as being an immune problem. Yeah. More so to anything. date, the Lyme 
world mm-hmm, mm-hmm. has been about killing the bacteria, right. the spirochete, the co-infection. To the degree of some people who have come here who've been on antibiotics for six years. Years. We had one for six years. And we'll point right. out the pluses of this, but we'll, we're just going to shoot straight with you today. And basically, we're going to give you everything that the infectious disease people are saying, everything that the Lyme doctors, quote unquote, are saying. And we're going to kind of try and put together the truth, so to speak. <laughs> facts. The, the facts, facts uh, out of both of those the camps. Facts. And then so you can understand how you can actually get better. So that's what we're going to talk about. The facts is, as we know them, the facts as they stand in the literature and the facts as we have seen them in response to the treatments that we're talking about. So different factions in the world of Lyme disease. Let's talk about diagnosis. And I, I, we have not had a chance to talk about this yet. So I'm treading on I'm treading on thin ice here. I'm not quite mm-hmm. sure exactly. I mean, do we want to talk about the dark field microscopy or do we want to just avoid that? I was going to avoid that one. See, that's <laughs> not, I knew because we haven't talked about this. Okay, we're going to avoid that one. Okay, let's talk yeah. about then you know what you want to talk about when you're talking about the because <laughs> I love to talk about the dark field microscopy, but I'll let it alone. You go ahead. Okay, great. So going back, what the average Lyme patient goes through, let's just kind of take that course. So let's let's say you think you have chronic Lyme. You've been reading on the internet and you do have everything I just outlined. You have joint pain, you have fatigue, you have muscle aches, you have fevers that seem to come and go, and you're not sure why. And so you go to your GP and you you tell your GP, you know, I think maybe I have Lyme disease. And your GP is going to say, well, were you bitten by a tick? And you're going to say, well, most of the patients coming in here with chronic Lyme do not remember being bitten by a tick. I'll just say that. That's the majority that we have seen. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had one the other day who was explained to them that it was probably their father that was probably bitten right. by a tick. Right. And that they had it genetically transferred to them. Right. So... So you're going to tell your GP that and your GP is going to either blow you off or just look at you with a uh, glazed look over their eyes and not know what to do because your GP has taught that Lyme disease comes from ticks. 40 to 70% are going to get a rash. Do you have a rash? Yes or no. And if you don't have a rash and this was longer than 30 days, what do you want me to do for you? Because the antibiotics are only good in the first 30 days. That's what your GP has taught. So then you go back to the internet and now you're reading more. And on the internet, you're reading that Lyme can be transferred maybe from parents to children. Maybe you're seeing it can be passed from mother in utero to child. Maybe you're reading that it can come from mosquitoes and it can come from pretty much every insect on the planet. Maybe you're reading that it can come from tears or semen or saliva. So you kiss somebody at the bar and that's how you got Lyme disease. And so these are now, now the questions have expanded for you as the chronic Lyme sufferer. So at this point, you're realizing that the standard medical community, the allopathic community is saying, you don't have Lyme disease and you're, you just have chronic fatigue and you have something else going on. And then you may dovetail out and go and see a Lyme doctor and the Lyme doctor is going to take you in and say, okay, you have all these symptoms. Yes, it does look like you have Lyme disease. Let me run this test. And they're going to run the test on you. Typically it's an IGENIX test and the IGENIX test is going to show that you have however many bands on your Western blot test. And they're going to say, you, yeah, it looks like you have Lyme and you have Babesia and you have these different infections. So now you think, hooray, we figured it out. I have Lyme, I have an infectious and at cause, that point, my problem. Would I interject that who hasn't been bitten by a tick, who right. doesn't fit into those categories? Mm-hmm. And, if you, and if you evaluated pretty much everybody walking by this window that we have over here, mm-hmm. 100 people, how many would have Lyme who have no symptoms? Right. Lots. Right. Okay. Exactly. So, and we're not saying the antibiotics are bad. I mean, we're going to cover everything. So mm-hmm. now you see the Lyme doctor and the Lyme doctor is mm-hmm. now treating you with the antibiotics. Now we have had patients who go on the antibiotics and they have like miraculous recoveries and it works. So we're not saying that, but we have also seen a lot of Lyme patients who are on antibiotics for a long period of time and they don't seem to be getting better. And that's where we have to start looking for other causes to the problem. And or they're getting worse. And or they're getting worse. So then we look at the testing. So this gets, so I kind of described the general over overlay of the issue and kind of the flow of a patient who thinks they have Lyme disease. But now let's go back to the testing. So the testing, and you probably read about this, the infectious disease societies, the CDC, 
they say, well, if you get it where you have a rash and you get treated with antibiotics in 30 days, you should be fine. But we can run testing with an ELISA test to say, okay, do you have antibodies to the bacteria? And if so, then you can run a Western blot test, which is a different type of laboratory test that will further verify the infection. But they'll say that if your ELISA test is negative, you shouldn't get a Western blot. Mm -hmm. Juxtapose the Lyme doctors will typically say, no matter what the ELISA says, we need to do a Western blot. And we have our own criteria for interpreting it, which is, let's just say much more not as stringent. It's not as stringent as the CDC's okay. criteria. Uh, I'm gonna be very polite here. Okay. But the president of the National Lyme Association for 10 years was here in Reno. I'm not gonna say what gotcha. his name was, gotcha. Gotcha. but I will just say that. And he sincerely, sincerely meant this. Pretty much everything was lying. Mm -hmm. In other yeah. words, that's right. where you're exactly. That's where you're going. Pretty much, if it's anything chronic, it's Lyme disease. So then we get this argument that all these chronic problems really are Lyme disease. The CDC came out, I don't know, three, four years ago, and said I think it was ten or a hundred times more people have Lyme disease than we thought. So I think it was ten times. So it was 30,000 people, now it's 300,000 people annually get exposed to it. But then doctors like what you're saying are saying that Lyme is coming at us from all different directions. All and basically, those things you said. Yeah, er everybody has Lyme. Genetic, kissing, mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. And so because of that, all these chronic problems of chronic pain to fibromyalgia to these chronic fatigue syndrome, it's all Lyme disease. So you can kind of see the rift <laughs> that we have going on that in the Lyme world. Second approach or paradigm would be a better way of putting it that everything is Lyme disease based on the consults that I do every day seems to find its way onto the internet in a much higher volume yes than the the good point the more accurate data good point say on the employee I like it I like good, it good good <laughs> so now we have in the literature there's a war going on between infectious disease doctors which are highly academic these are really very academic people who like things to be very precise and the Lyme doctors who, you know, they're, but these are clinicians. So you have like researchers and you have clinicians and they're warring over this. And the war is that in the infectious disease world, they're saying all you Lyme patients, you really don't have Lyme disease based on our criteria and you're being bamboozled um, by these Lyme doctors. And Lyme doctors are saying, well, you know what, I got, patients who are chronically ill, they have signs of Lyme disease according to my testing. It makes sense in my paradigm. So I'm gonna treat them and I'm seeing good results with some of these patients. With some of them. Right. The reason why we're doing this, and I kind of did a little dance in my living room last night when I saw this research article because it is so profound. This is a game changer in, in the Lyme world. And this is something all chronic Lyme patients need to get. And just to verify the chronic Lyme issue, because the infectious disease people say chronic Lyme doesn't exist. We don't agree with that. We do feel no, that chronic exists. Lyme exists. For sure it exists. And if anybody promotes that, it's the general practitioner. So I attached an article to a previous Lyme broadcast we did. I attached it to this one that we did today, where the general practitioners are saying, chronic Lyme is real. We see all of you patients who are coming in with all these symptoms. Maybe you had Lyme disease, you got the antibiotics, but you never fully recovered. We know that it's real. We just don't, we're general practitioners. We're not infectious disease doctors. Right. We don't have the data right. to really figure out what's real, what's not, what's truth, what's, what's fiction. <sighs> so that's kind of the overlay of the ground that, um, that most of you have been through. Okay, now we need to clear it out for them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're gonna clear that up for you and we're gonna tell you what we <laughs> think, because we're the only ones that know. I do want to reinforce one point on the end of robotics before. And I go you ahead. heard it here first on on this mm -hmm. on, on the new data that's come out. Yeah. 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 We should and probably do like a little article too. Yeah, quick. we will. We're gonna do an article on this and and uh, this is it is profound. We were talking about it beforehand. Uh, uh, we came to this conclusion a couple of years ago. Uh, we, we're trying to figure out how long ago the researchers who came out with what we're about to reveal to you came when, when they started thinking about that. What we're going to tell you is this is actually an autoimmune mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or an, 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 at the very least an immune system problem, mm -hmm. which is what we came to the conclusion of that fateful morning at the 
Where were we then? Black I bear. don't even want to we're, say where we were. <laughs> we were the black bear stuff. We were eating on our diet. It just was <laughs> not that tasty. Yeah. Well, it was tasty. It was tasty. It was. <laughs> yes. So nonetheless, um, within the Lyme world, there's an argument for use of chronic antibiotics because the bacteria keep kind of rearing their ugly head. That actually has been validated now. So they're called persisters. It's not that the end, the bacteria is antibiotic resistant as much is that it evades the immune system it goes into tissues it comes out of tissues it's actually hard to recognize you sure you don't want to talk about the black bill microscopy i'm sure okay. <laughs> where they disappear I'm positive and then they okay <laughs> we don't need people mad at us from all directions okay. and um so and we're just kind of joking and just but the thing is we have to tell you what we observe to be true and what the literature is observing to be true that's the bottom yeah. line. Read the research well, what articles we see that to I be attach. true in the reactions of the patients that we treat. Yeah, exactly. And read the research articles that we attach to today's broadcast. You'll see what the infectious disease doctors are saying. You'll see what the Lyme doctors are saying. And it is true that this bacteria comes in and out of different tissues of the body. So that is the argument for pulsing these different antibiotics. So you take SEFTA, then you don't take SEFTA, then you take SEFTA again. And that actually has been shown to decrease the bacterial load. But the problem is, like we said before, is that we see a lot of Lyme patients who are coming in here who have been on chronic antibiotic administration, multiple antibiotics at once, pulsing different antibiotics, and they still have a lot of the symptoms that yeah. they started out Two with. to three years is not uncommon. Two to three years is not uncommon. And the reason why they have all those symptoms is because you have an autoimmune problem. Right. So Lyme disease, it's now been verified. We've been speculating about it. We have we talked about it in our last uh in our last presentation we online did. we did before this before this data came out and just like we saw small fiber neuropathy in most of the fibromyalgia patients we were saying that's where the nerves die and degenerate we saw that five years ago and then it came out three years later in the literature we've been seeing this in Lyme patients and now we know for certain that it is there as dr rutherford said just like let's go through some autoimmune diseases rheumatoid arthritis we now know that rheumatoid arthritis is triggered by bacteria in the mouth, the gut, and a urinary bacteria. We know that multiple sclerosis is associated with leaky gut syndrome, but it's also associated with chronic Epstein-Barr virus infections. We know that Hashimoto's thyroiditis is triggered by gastrointestinal food reactions, genetic stress, and infections in the thyroid with three different viruses. So there's a gut and infectious component to most autoimmune diseases. Right. Sjogren syndrome, where your eyes get really dry and the mouth gets really dry and they have to drink all the time and they have you know, yellow eyes because of it. They have Epstein-Barr and H. pylori. So we say all this to say that is autoimmunity. That's the new field of autoimmunity. And we now know that Lyme disease is an autoimmune problem. Let me go a little deeper. So this new study, they looked at Lyme disease patients and they looked at this one enzyme in our body called matrix metalloproteinase 10. We'll just call it MMP10. That's all you need to remember. And it basically, this little enzyme chews up collagen. It does a host of other things, but just think it chews up collagen in the joints to kind of keep things going normally. Well, for those who get the Lyme bacteria, <clears throat> their immune system starts making antibodies to this enzyme. And then if they've been treated with antibiotics, they still may keep making antibodies to this, to this enzyme, even if they feel better. And then they've also shown that those antibodies continue, antibodies are little immune cells, in those who have been treated with the antibiotics but still have symptoms, like all of you who are watching this broadcast. But the difference between the group that feels better and the group that doesn't feel better, like all of you, is that there's actually a T cell response which keeps going as well. So back, pause, B cells make antibodies to mean science of the immune system. Are we doing okay here? Yeah. All right. So we're within... going right where I was going to. Okay. <laughs> so we're the, with the immune that. system. The immune system is like the military. We have multiple different sides. We have like the Marine Corps. We have the Air Force side. We have B cells, which make antibodies. We have T cells, which do a ton of stuff. But simplistically, they kind of coordinate where everybody is going. They go inside the cells of your body and make sure, you know, they'll kill viruses. They'll kill cancer. They'll do things like that. But B cells make antibodies. T cells kind of coordinate and kill. Just think of it that way. So in those of you who are watching this broadcast, you have a B cell response where you're making antibodies to the MMP10, but your T cells are also killing it as well. So we now, and five days ago, six days ago, 
February 24th. It has been confirmed that those of you with quote unquote chronic Lyme have an autoimmune problem. For sure. End of story. And you don't, well, okay. We didn't discuss this enough, so I'm trying to not go in. So, so you have an autoimmune problem. And that's when I go back to the beginning and say, that's what we said. I mean, basically we're sitting there at the black bear diner eating some shriveled up <laughs> <laughs> vegetables. It's not their forte, but it's a fun place to sit and, and, and talk. Uh, and, uh, and, and we looked at each other and said, these people just have a bad immune system, just like all of our other patients, just like our fibromyalgia patients, our rheumatoid arthritis. Patients. So now the battle becomes the immune system. And just to make it a little clear, maybe make it a little clear of like, this person goes in, they get the antibiotics, that goes away. This mm -hmm. person goes in, they get the antibiotics, it goes away, but then it comes back. This person goes in, gets the antibiotics, it, it never goes away. That's a great, great point. Because that's that's, very that's, good. that's where they come in to me. Mm -hmm. And, I, and, I, and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, we get the people who, of course, nothing goes away. And they've, they've been trying things. I, and, I, and I'll say another thing. Uh, um, it's a different model, okay? It's a different model of care than a lot of even, so the, so the medical profession uses the model of care of, and this is not, again, this is not anti-medicine, okay? I get a pneumonia like five weeks ago, I went and I got an antibiotic, okay? Just let me, just let you know. All right, for all those who never want to take a drug, don't be silly like that, okay? So, but I, I'm better, okay? I'm better, but I had to do some other things because I have a lot of immune problems. And, and I had to do some other things to kind of like keep this thing under control because my immune system when there was an overwhelming infection, you kill, you take the antibiotic, you kill the bacteria that's going to cause the pneumonia, but so many other reactions occur. So I had to start doing some other things to dampen my immune response, which was now starting to rear its ugly head again. Okay. The, so that's two paradigms is the point. Okay. One is kill the bacteria. One is because I know I have a bunch of autoimmune promises dampen the immune system, but the, but the paradigm for the person who's had the bacterial infection and done the antibiotics and it's not working and unfortunately is also damaging the gut, which Dr. Gates just made the point is like the center of everything. Okay. That model is, is we continue to find it lacking for the, for the chronic pain patient. And the model is that you have to dampen your immune responses and you have to dampen your immune responses. And, and, there's some, and, and, and the point I wanted to make is a, a lot of you have also come in here and, and you come walking in here with lists of drugs like this, lists of, 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 of supplements like this. I mean, I've seen lists where people literally had to give them and their child and their husband, because of course everybody in the family had it, something every two hours. And these people's, Stress responses were high <laughs> and stress hormones tend to um, cause your immune response to, to, uh, to exacerbate and, and damage autoimmune problems and damage uh, problems, uh, cause immune responses in, in the system. So these people were getting a treatment that was, uh, that was perpetuating their problem. But we have found that if you see that approach, that's probably kind of, and you're not feeling good, that's probably a sign of like, okay, this is like the wrong thing. Our, our understanding of it, okay, is it, it, I would say less is more mm -hmm. in, a, in mm -hmm. affecting the immune response. But you, we might want to go over. So I wanted to just say there's two different models. One's the kill it model. The other one is the dampen the immune system model. And the dampen the immune system model has to be the model because that's what we have seen consistently over now seven years. And now this article definitively says you guys aren't crazy. And just for the record, I've been in practice since like 1979, really. And, and, and it started out with musculoskeletal practice, but even there, you, back problems, you know, leg problems, you would see things in practice. And if you were kind of paying attention, you, and you're seeing a lot of patients, you kind of go, wow, this doesn't really fit with what I'm being told. And then maybe you try something 
and maybe you put a lift in somebody's shoe or an orthotic, which back in the 70s was not a cool thing to do. And all of a sudden, their knee pain goes away and their butt pain goes away and their back pain stabilizes and they're going, no, no, that doesn't do anything. You go, well, it does so on my patients. So you keep telling me it doesn't do anything. I'm going to do this with my patients. That's kind of how mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. evolved. Mm -hmm. in, 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 and we started with the fibromyalgia patient. And how, the fibromyalgia patient who has Lyme disease, uh, or, I mean, Lyme, the actual Lyme disease patient, a lot of them are going to be diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. Somebody mm -hmm. came into me the other day with a list of 60 symptoms. <laughs> and they said, well, all these symptoms are symptoms of Lyme disease. And I said, well, you know, really, with the way we understand it, between the immune system and an overfiring, usually sympathetic nervous system, a fight flight system. We have some data on that online. I mean, pretty much what structure in the body can't be affected by that? Mm -hmm. None, mm -hmm. everything can be affected by that. So, so you have every single symptom that there possibly can be, and you have been educated. You've been educated online and by the doctors, who have also been educated by seminars that you and I have attended mm -hmm. that this is Lyme and it causes everything and it's, and it's good, good as every symptom and this is the way you do it and so on and so forth. So there's a, there's a, um, there's a paradigm out there that, it, that has its own language and it has its own testing. I only made an oblique, I made an oblique uh, comment on the, on the, on the black, dark, dark, dark field microscopy because one of the arguments is, well, now you can see that the Lyme is gone, but the patient's still sitting there and they're not feeling good, but those little guys have disappeared because they've gone inward and now it looks, but you're still sitting there, you're not feeling good and so on and so forth. So there's a reason for that. And Dr. Gates just articulated that a couple of minutes ago. So, so we've struggled with this since we yeah. and i would like to hammer that please, a little bit more please. so you kill the bacteria hammer it. You hammer it. <laughs> he wants me to be polite but he's gonna hammer it well, regardless of whether you're using a western blot from hygienics like or you're using dark field or you're using one of these other companies i can't remember what one's one acronym is like als which is a disease but um so let's say you're getting the antibiotics and they tell you that the Lyme bacteria is gone but you still feel like crap you probably still feel like crap because your immune system is still attacking the heck out of your joints with this article that we attached, this is five days old. This is saying that you're getting antibodies to the joint tissue. Who knows what else you're getting antibodies to? You may be getting antibodies to five or seven different tissues. Thyroid, gut, brain. Thyroid, different aspects of neurological joint. tissue. We just don't know yet, but we do know now we have the tip of the iceberg. Where we say, okay, we do have definitive evidence that you have an autoimmune problem, that chronic Lyme is really an autoimmune issue more than anything. So you feel like crap because your immune system is still attacking yeah. you. So it's not killing the bacteria anymore as much. It's more regulating your immune system. And that's what we've been doing relative to all these different autoimmune diseases. Dr. Rutherford said, most of it frankly starts in the gut. There is definitely a gut connection. 70% of your immune system is there. We've observed clinically that by working with the gastrointestinal tract in terms of using six to seven different diets, working with the bacterial populations in the gut, not using probiotics for the most part, but killing off bad bacteria, making sure that protein antigens from food as well as bacterial components absorb less when they're absorbing at too high of a rate. So your immune system can calm down in your gut. When that happens, then your immune system can better fight other infections in your body and can come into better balance. And there are other things associated with bringing the immune system into balance that we do. And that's where we've seen such great changes with patients who have chronic Lyme. Also, one thing that we haven't even talked about is the neurological connection to these autoimmune diseases. Because so frequently, most of the chronic autoimmune patients coming in, no matter what they have, from rheumatoid arthritis to MS to chronic Lyme, are massively stressed out. And we're not saying that you think you're stressed out. We're just saying that you have an overfiring fear response in your brain that's chronically driving cortisol levels in either too high or too low fashion. And as a result of that, your immune system is out of balance. And that's another reason why you keep attacking your own self. Yeah. So gut, stress, Lying, yeah. and then the infections is a component of it. What we do is we handle the infection last. That's our paradigm. We look at that last. Right. And then we've seen some cool changes with it there. But we the, work with the medical community. Yeah, we refer patients all the time. Regularly. Okay. okay. I mean, it's not, we, we use 
an integrated approach. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> that, the, the term bugs me. It just bugs me because all it means to me is you go into somebody's office and there's 12 doctors there and they all keep passing around and none of them talk to each other, but it's integrated. <laughs> We have, we, I, I, for a team approach, I mean, we're like totally in communication with the doctors. We're all on the same page. We all have the same philosophy. We all have the same understanding. We have an osteopath we work with for the stress mechanisms. Basically, Dr. Gates said it floods your system with cortisol. I find that people usually understand a little better when I say your system is being flooded with stress hormones, you know, and that is affecting everything. So we have people who help us and we talked about it the other day. I mean, there's something that we're, there's, we use some neurotransmitters for some of these people to calm it down. But as you stated either yesterday or the day before, a lot of people think that that's going to calm them down and that's going to be it. Doug Gates specifically works with these mechanisms in the brain. And just doing uh, GABA or just doing whatever, when somebody has their house on fire, it's, it's, like, it's like peeing on, a, on that fire. Okay, because if you have a bad gut, which you're going to have, by the way, after two or three years of having antibiotic therapy. And if you have a bad immune system, and if you have the stress mechanism flooding your entire system with stress hormones, I, I, you don't have to be a biochemist to understand the chaos that that is creating in your system. But it is screwing up your immune system, and your immune system is overreactive, and it's trying to attack those bacteria like 24 hours a day. You calm that down now you can address the infection. Whereas in the model you're in, everything in the kitchen sink is being thrown at attacking an infection that in most cases has no chance of responding because all these other factors are there just sabotaging whatever you're trying to do. That's something. I, I think that's a good point. That that good? Done. I think that's perfect. That's the <laughs> point. And that's, that's the, the point. point. And this is so frigging exciting because on a number of reasons. I mean, you've heard us talk about the gut ad nauseum. We have a case, now I haven't seen him yet, so if I'm talking out of line, we had a case of MS that came in a couple of weeks ago. This young man, cool young man, just positive as can be, literally could not lift his feet off the ground. He was sitting in, in front of me doing a consult, and I, I was a little hesitant to take his case, but he was so positive, and he, he didn't have any expectations. His expectation were, look, if you can do something for me, great. If you can't, that's fine. I get it. And I he was not it. relapsing remitting. Just know he's been no, doing he was this. On his he's way not down. doing this. Okay. He's doing this. So we put him on the diet. That's it. We, we started him on an allergy elimination diet, which eliminates inflammation and antibodies from flying around the, the little immune cells that Dr. Gates talked about from flying around the system, in his case, immune cells that were attacking his nerves. And literally two weeks, was it two weeks later? Two weeks. He came in here on crutches able to walk around, able to lift his feet. And the point being this, the point I wanted to make a lot, because I, I do these consults every day and every time and now I know, how do you guys know that? And what makes you think you know that? It was like, well, that this is how we know it. What did we do? We put him on a diet that dampened his immune system, dampened down his gut, helped his gut out just by calming everything down. And he starts walking around. Do you think that I think that one day they're going to find MS possibly comes from the gut? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think the we, same way we that kinda... we saw for years rheumatoid arthritis patients mm -hmm. immediately almost you, within like two to four weeks of dampening everything down, the, the swelling would start to go down. They'd start feeling better. Were we crazy? No, we're crazy. We're watching these people. And sure enough, six, eight, ten months ago comes out that rheumatoid arthritis is coming from bacteria in the sinuses, the urinary tract, and the gut. Let me tell you, there's like four pounds of, of bacteria in your gut. There's millions of bacteria in the gut. How long is it going to take them? And, and the exciting part is they're all over the gut now. Mm -hmm. Now research is all over the gut. I think we're going to actually start seeing answers to lupus and to, mm -hmm. and to multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. that, that's how exciting this breakthrough is to me, mm -hmm. you know, looking mm -hmm. through all this stuff. And, and this is huge. I mean, if you're fortunate enough to see this and you don't think we're a bunch of idiots, then, you, you know, look at this stuff and start to explore this because... I'm going to tell you, we have seen consistently, 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 we have had one Lyme patient who didn't do good. And, and the reason she didn't do well was because her, her mm -hmm. fight flight mm -hmm. syndrome was so out of control and we didn't have total control of the case either. Mm -hmm. So there was some conflict of like, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Not to make an excuse, but, and, and, but her husband did well, mm -hmm. who had it and he did well. He was more like on board. And she was more bought in 
So you have to be, she couldn't let go of that paradigm of you got to kill the infection. That was really the main issue. And she was very stressed because mm -hmm. she was sick. Because you're sick, you don't know where things are going. It's like your brain's going a million miles. Where's this going? Where am I going to be in three years? I've been there, okay? And it's and it's kind of like, wow, you know, it, it, it so now perpetuates. And we're not saying you're stressed. We're saying that your brain has gotten into, into survival mode and it's kind of got you in fight flight to like what's going on here and you're flooding your system with hormones 24 hours a day and off and on and and that's and that is sabotaging everything you're trying to do anyway but that's that's kind of the complexity of it but then it's not now no i mean it's kind of the complexity of it, but but what we're saying is as of five days ago the clarity should start coming to us probably not just from us now with that coming out and i don't know what they're going to do with this i don't know if they're just going to start giving people steroids like they give with MS or stuff like that. I don't know what the medical model is going to do with this, but I know that there is there are answers in the alternative world for, for people who have Lyme disease. And now it is definitive that, that dampening the immune system and dampening the stress mechanisms in your brain will potentially, in the properly selected patient, that gal apparently was not the properly selected patient. We probably should have caught that up front that that was going on. Mm -hmm. But but in the properly selected patient, can produce substantial substantial improvement in most of these cases. I'm with you. Okay, I agree. So, that, is that it? Mm, that's it. That's we covered it. it. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Uh -huh. So, you know, I and, and I was almost, almost had any questions. You know, refer to it. look at the articles. And if, if you look at those articles and they overwhelm you, don't read them, just read the summary. There's a, always a conclusion at the bottom that's about a paragraph long and, 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 and it's written in relatively uh, sane English. <laughs> you don't have to wade through all the antibodies and the this and the that. You just look at the end and you can read those and you can see for yourself what is being said there. I'm, and I'm saying that because this is so big this is so huge. It's, 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 it's hard. It's, it's as big as when they're going to find out, I think, that MS is coming from some from bacteria in the gut or something along there. How could that be? How could it not be if this gentleman had that much of a response? All we did was put him on a, on a baseline diet, you know, and, 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 and it's hard to say who, who gets what. All of you who see, have MS, you're going to get on the baseline diet. Some of you are going to feel better. Some of you aren't. There's a lot of factors involved. But this and you see stuff like that over and over and over again, it's like, okay, I'm not crazy. You know, th this stuff is like really happening. So don't write us. Look at the look at the uh, look at the references that were attached. Don't write us because we just don't have enough time. Um, we're kind of busy right now. <laughs> and uh, uh, but we do have, you know, we do have stuff online. If you want to look at our website and you want to see kind of how these things work and how we think about these things, feel free to do it. It's power health talk dot com mm -hmm. if you want more um, online this is the most updated one we have one which a little bit more uh, where we're a little bit more involved in the actual treatment mm -hmm. the first time what was that about a month or two ago no i think about five months ago. about five months ago okay mm -hmm. you can look to hangouts power health dot power health talk dot com hangouts you can scroll down to our first line presentation you'll get a much better idea of how we actually address it um, and anything else there that interests you, if you want to look up those stress mechanisms, what would it be like, like stress, just stress, or would it be? I would like watch our depression and anxiety broadcast because I'm not saying that you have that, but we talked a lot about the fear response. Watch our insomnia broadcast. A lot of you have insomnia. Yeah. Watch that because yeah, we're right. talking about the fear response. Yeah, all these things are connected. <clears throat> all these things are connected. Yeah. So, so there you go. Let us know what you think. If you want, you can let us know what you think. And, uh, and, and uh, we, we really appreciate that. And if you have any suggestions for future topics, certainly we're always open to that. Mm -hmm. uh, give Dr. Gates a break because he's the one thinking of all these topics now. And, um, and then I think that's it. So uh, we'll see you next week if this is something that you happen to do every Tuesday morning. And, and we'll look forward to having something else that we hope is very interesting to you. And remember, Lyme is an autoimmune problem. You heard it here first. Mm -hmm. so. Thanks for watching. Okay. <laughs>